Hello everyone, I'm Rita Rue of Creative Artmosphere and I am here today chatting with you a bit about this plain ear painting that I did in my backyard. This house has drawn my attention every time I go outside a certain time of day around high noon, which is like what, 12, yeah, high noon, and a certain time of evening around five to six o'clock. The sun just really lights this house up so nicely and it always draws my attention even not just on the house even the the grass the lawn the bushes and the trees the way the shadow plays very nicely off of the house has gotten me interested in doing this in plain air painting this picture of this particular home in plain air so i want to actually share with you a little bit making a little noise back here um about artistic licensing artistic license and the definition according to this book here i want to hold this book up so you can uh oh knocking into the microphone as well it's called painting acrylic basics by Janice Robertson and you can see that I check this out 40 page step-by-step -step drawing book yeah I checked this out from the library and it's very informative the thing that was of interest to me is because it talks about using artistic license and it says you'll notice that the finished painting is not an exact replica of the reference photo. Artistic license allows you to put your own spin on a painting. And that's what I did while in plain air a couple of days ago. Now this picture behind me is the result of the plain air uh, session. And I added a picket fence to this I had a wide open section and I said, why don't I just put a fence up in those trees that are just ever so slightly hanging over the top of the fence. I acquired this draw, jaw drawer last night from the applesauce. I figured it'd be a good container for cleaning the brushes. I'm sharing that brush with you. That's a number eight brush that I've had for quite some time. I got that from Utrex years ago. And I mixed up a burnt umber tone to lay in the underdrawing. And I had up uh, the, the big umbrella on the table to give me some shade because it was hot out there that day. I will share that with you. It was pretty warm. But I didn't let that stop me from getting outside and enjoying myself with this plain air painting. Now, for my setup, I used a setup from this book here. I got another book. This one's mine. I bought this one. It's called In Plain Air Acrylic. And this, the author is Mark McAfee. This is a good book too. And I actually referenced his book using the minimalist approach for the setup. Um, I'm trying to get that. Maybe I'll just share this with you, a little clip of it. Uh, but it's the minimalist approach and it tells you what to bring just the bare minimum. You bring a bottle of water for drinking, mixing paint and cleaning brushes. And I tell you, I did need that water because that heat was very dehydrating. And I had an eight inch flat brush and it says you can use it both for painting and for initial outlines. And that's what I did in this picture here. And you use 
you use the largest brush that you can. And I used a large brush to paint in that undercolor. It uh, looks like a, a purplish type reddish color that I'm painting on. And then I went smaller to do the uh, underdrawing with this uh, brush, number eight brush here. And uh, I had a Stay Wet palette as well, which you see that I have on top of the uh, Sienna Peshat box. There is a towel, a wet towel to be exact, <clears throat> and a piece of wax paper with paint applied on top. And amazingly, this works really well. I had four tubes of paint. I had cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and titanium white, and philocyanin blue. I should have had some black with me, um, but I just decided to go with the bare minimum according to this book here. He also had those colors, so. He also talks about a collapsible container for water. That's for cleaning brushes. I, I used to have one of those, but I'm not sure exactly what. I lost it. And um, if, I, if I see one when I'm out again, I'm definitely going to get that so I can replace it. And then he had two painting panels with him. I just had this one and a large backpack or a large enough bag to carry everything and this person uses a messenger bag he's got a picture of that in there as well so I, I went around well I, I followed the minimalist approach and he also talks about an umbrella you know shading the painting okay let's get this in there can you see that uh, there we go and I had my umbrella from the table, so I was well shaded. I had all that covered. And it made for a great day, a great paint session outside. Where are we at now? Okay, so I'm getting in the values of the trees there, still doing the underdrawing and um, putting some value and tone there. and just enjoying the day and the task at hand before me. And it's not really a task, it was just something very pleasant, a pleasant time outside. I think at this point I noticed that there's a large empty space there and I just decided to put the picket fence in. The, piece, the picket fence is not there. That's the artistic licensing that I'm talking about. Adding or taking away things from your art. And if it works fine, if it doesn't, you know, you can take another approach. It's all your, it's your choice. Everything's coming along really nice. I got a little bit too much water on the brush at that point. You see how it was dripping down uh, onto the roof. Um, 
and I'm actually going in again with a little bit more value on the brush putting some more dark tones on the tree and now at this point it looks like I'm mixing in that blue mixing up the blue to add the sky in so everything's coming right along I'm working from the top to the bottom of the painting and that actually helps when you follow a particular process when I'm not all over the place I follow working from the top to the bottom seems to work really well for me and that's something that I'm going to implement into my painting sessions from here on out it's been nice reading books and looking at videos and just picking up things here and there from what I can use in my own paint life paint life Let's see here. I've got another book that I use for this as well. This is a nice book, Mastering Composition by Ian Roberts. He also has a YouTube channel that I have subscribed to. And it's a very good channel, a very informative channel. Sorry for knocking the mic around there. Um, if you get a chance pick up this one it's got so much information in it it talks about composition and studying the masters and let's see armature and horizontals and verticals things like that and so much more so at this point I have added color into the trees got the sky laid in and just putting in the value there and I think I was talking about that before I uh, talked about the Ian Roberts book but uh, now I'm putting some value on the tree bark and everything is coming along fairly nice okay I got a little tree bark going on back here as well in this tree Shouldn't be worrying about that right now. I think I'm jumping ahead. So why don't I stop? I'm gonna stop it now. So let me lay the color of the roof in. I think I need to put a little bit more paint on the canvas here. It's got some yellow. I definitely need some more yellow. Let's see how this looks. So at this point, I'm painting in the roof color. It's kind of like a darker, it's not tan. I'm not sure why I'm going this light with it, but it, it was a little darker than what I have chosen here. But acrylics do dry darker. So maybe that's why I went so light on this one, but I can see that I did darken that tone up. I added a little bit more of a brown tone to it and now I'm adding in the color of the actual siding on the house that was like a, a vanilla type color it was much more I can't say eggshell because it had a little bit more of a yellow tone to it than an egg would if so it wasn't eggshell white but it was definitely in the vanilla family
I'm definitely going to be doing some more plein air painting soon. On location, I want to go to a water, like a lake or a beach area, and do a plein air painting there. And I'm looking to do that possibly this weekend. Take about maybe 30 minutes or so to uh, draw a thumbnail sketch in and it might not even take me that long 15 to 30 minutes um, of working on a thumbnail sketch and then from there taking the thumbnail sketch and painting I'm going to be bringing my four uh, colors with me as well I might throw in black I'm not sure but I'm going to put that in the bag just in case I'm not sure if I'll use it but I'll have it just in case I uh, changed my mind on that, but I'm going to have my cat medium red, my yellow, blue, and titanium white. And at least, I'd say a good three brushes, one large brush, one number eight, and uh, a pointed, a pointed round brush, shall I say smaller for a little bit of details here and there and i'm not going to get too crazy with details uh while plain air painting i'm just going to make sure i block in the shapes the simple shapes and capture the colors and then if i'm not going to spend that time putting in the detail there i'll bring it back home here in the studio and uh, paint in some more detailing. I was rather pleased. I was pleased with how that came out because, well, there's no because. It was practice. And there's some shadow over here on this side of the house. There's a tree that's not in view. And now I'm going to lighten it up. Um, Going back to that roof for a hot second. I think that's a little better. But I'm going in darker under the awning there for some reason. It's, I don't, I, I was trying to go off memory and I know that that shadow was not that dark. So as you can see, I did lighten up that shadow behind me because I thought, hmm, I don't think it's that dark. It's dark, but not that dark. And that's the great thing about painting with acrylics. You can paint in layers. So if there are some changes you need to make, you can do that with acrylics. You can do that with oils too. Speaking of oils, I'm thinking about experimenting with some oil paints as well. Getting the four uh, colors as well so I can do my mixing. And just giving it a try. Seeing what, uh, if anything... 
seeing what I'm missing out on. I might not be missing out at all, but I do enjoy working with acrylic paints. And I had been thinking about buying a different brand paint and experimenting with that. Um, Golden is one that I might try. Uh, Master's Touch is one that I'm going to try. And uh, there was a couple of others, um, Windsor Newton. So, yeah, I'm going to experiment with a different brand of paint. And I notice about the basic brand is that they dry a little dull. And I do like that nice and glossy uh, appearance to the paint. Now, there is a medium that you can use, a gloss medium. That will give you that nice full sheen uh, shiny look. darker here along the um, so yeah I'll be uh, experimenting with a different couple of different brands and seeing which I like the best so or shall I say I'm auditioning different acrylic paints to see what's out there because I've been using basic paints for since forever and I think it'll be good just to switch it up a bit. Okay, so let me put down a color for and experiment with different the paints. Pavement in the driveway. And it looks like I'm mixing up a color for the pavement now because I've got everything basically. This is yeah, that's for the pavement. I thought it would be either the pavement or for that picket fence back there. And this is too light for pavement. I, you know, I found myself, they always say have a color wheel with you. I didn't have my color wheel. But once I got back to the studio, I used some pastels to match the color too. There was like a large variety of pastel colors. And uh, what I did was pick up a couple of colors and match it to the grass and then let down gray tones well, i don't have it here right now i was going to show you the pastel colors might be behind me No, not behind me right now. But anyway, I had these little chalk sticks of pastel and they all had the colors that I needed. So I said, you know what? I'm going to use this pastel as a reference to mixing this paint. And it actually worked. And I'll probably be doing that again. It made me think about what it takes to mix up paint colors. Um, when I Sometimes when I mix a green I would put way too much blue in it. So I'd really have to look at the green and decipher how much blue is really in this shade of green. Is it more yellow than blue or is it more blue, you know, than yellow to get the the tone that I was looking for. Even when I mixed up that brown, um, kind of like that, uh, the color, the siding on the house, it was like a tannish vanilla type color so I had to ask myself is there more white in this tone than there is yellow and as and I had to answer yes there was so I just slightly touched the brush in the yellow and mix it until I got that tone that I wanted and then I found myself adding a little bit of red and blue in there to turn it brown just very little so much so much so just a little dot of it 
was actually able to get me to where I wanted to be when it came to mixing that color. And um, I actually had pretty a lot of fun with it. I had fun mixing those colors. And usually mixing colors gave me, I won't say a headache, but, you know, it was a challenge. But I am determined that it will be a challenge no more. And if it is a challenge, I know how to overcome it. Life has challenges and we just have to hang in there, not give up, and and uh, reach our goals. And it looks like I'm mixing up a looks brownish. Not sure what I'm doing there. I think I'm going to try to darken the pavement up. That's what I'm doing. Mixing like a black in there so I can create a gray. And it didn't work out too well in this session. But when I brought it in the house and used those pastels as a reference, it actually worked. Yeah, but this is a, uh, it's kind of funny because the paint value that I mixed in made it look like there was a green grassy effect on the pavement and even looking at this yeah I, I know and I was not wanting to put any down but I just said well I'm gonna go with it and because I did that because I knew that once I got inside I could change it but yeah that's something else I'm just trying to touch it lightly to darken it up and that's not it but I got it to where it should be. Doesn't the pavement look a little bit gray from what you can see here? I did fix it up. Thanks to the pastel chalk. And yeah. This was a lot of fun. It was a lesson learned. And I'm saying it was a lesson learned because I know I don't have to do this anymore. I can either get my color wheel or get my pastels out and choose the color that I want to match and match it with my primary colors. It's amazing. Yeah, so I even put this color in the grass area, trying to lighten the grass up. And that wasn't particularly working either. So I'm thinking in my mind that it's time to just wrap it up. But I also see that the fence hasn't been blocked in either. So I'm going to put some white on the brush and put some color on that picket fence and then wrap it up. And this portion, the, the fence needs to be, it needs to be a little darker because it's in the shadowed area behind the trees. So as I go further away from the trees, that color needs to get a little brighter. And I'll go back in and add a little bit more white to the brush to lighten up the area to my right. Looks like I did a jump skip there and I'm darkening up that shaded area there just a tad bit more. And this is all what blocking in the colors and the shapes is about. Just getting everything down, starting with the thumbnail sketch, and then from the thumbnail sketch, putting in the value, the underdrawing values, and from there, matching the colors of the scene and painting the subject matter in. Adding a little bit more white to the fence 
I've got some green that looks like a little greenish hue there so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that but, uh, and I learn so much each and every time I get out and I paint whether I'm outside or inside 